Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to um, the channel with many topics or something like that. I can't remember anyway. It doesn't matter at this point in time. Uh, I keep, I, I, the early out, outside of my, of uh, my, me learning MMT, uh, a lot of critics were comparing it to journalism. And when I look it up, uh, just before I looked at this, looked at this last time, uh, the state of Virginia kept coming up a lot. Uh, when I looked it up, it seemed like uh, Virginia was one of the um, their own currency issuers. But a lot of times, when they were since the UK uh, pound was used as uh, the currency of a medium of, 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 uh, of exchange here, which is in gold bullion. Uh, but uh, the they like to have it back. So uh, what wound up happening was in order to be able to maintain currency in the local economy, they had to uh, issue their own currency, and uh, that including the uh, uh, gold bullion. And um, eventually, they had to tax them out. So they had to tax out uh, the bullion and send it back to the UK. Uh, and at that time, with that I read it anyway. Uh, they would burn the excess uh, currency um, and when they tax it out. Anyway, so I looked it up again, and uh, according to Bing AI, because I don't use AI any other reason except for just kind of semi uh, sources are uh, say pretty much the same answer. Uh, in this case, it says yes. The uh, the economic theory of chartalism has been associated with the United States, as I, that's why I asked. Chartalism is a heterodox theory of money that argues that money originated historically with states' attempts to direct economic activity rather than as a spontaneous solution to the problems of border, uh, barter, excuse me, uh, barter, or as a means for which to tokenize debt. The theory suggests that fiat currency has value in exchange because of its sovereign power to levy taxes on economic activity payable in the currency they issue. That's the pretty much the point of what Warren Moser had originally said was that the federal level of currency um, uh, 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 the Congress having the sole right to uh, to spend currency into existence in order to be able to pay for programs or, uh, you know, transportation, road uh, forming, stuff like that, uh, trade and other uh, cases as well. So that's where charlatanism did come from. It was just, it looks like a, just a way of getting past uh, barterism or doing stuff, doing stuff for each other in terms of like plumbing, if they have plumbing, or stuff like that, in exchange for another service. That sort of thing. Now, as a friendly reminder, I went through this yesterday. Uh, U.S. debt is in the form of U.S. Treasuries. U.S. Treasuries is a savings uh, bond. It's where you can put money into a certificate, basically what is known as a... Thing is a, is a um, Yellow back, or it's 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 a yellow paper pretty much versus green back, which is a green paper. Um, but anyway, so U.S. Treasuries, which is what the Fed calls national debt, is again total amount of money spent in the economy without it being taxed out. So in this case, again, TreasuryDirect.gov is the one and only place to electronically buy and redeem U.S. savings bonds. They also uh, offer electronic sales and auctions of other U.S. backed investments and to the general public, financial professionals, and other and state and local governments. Now, I bring this up because, let's see, one of the interesting factoids is, and I went, to, went, went with this a couple of days, oh, a week ago, some of that. Uh, let's see, where is this, uh, yeah, so basically what they want to do is, in order to, in order to take out some of the, uh, unused funds, a auction, uh, treasury, in order to be able to do a reserve drain, so that it takes out more money at the economy without taxing it out, and that 
as self as as uh, or prints money on the uh, interest payments that are are put on U.S. Treasuries. Um, I think uh, the U the government uh, U.S. government has like roughly seven trillion dollars U.S. Uh, treasuries which pay out in the billions uh, every six months so that in itself was back in the economy in one form or another so that's one of the reasons why we've been able to stay out of recession uh, it's not because of um, government spending uh, what a lot of times you'll hear is because people have uh, extra money well the, the extra the people who have extra money are not the low income uh, variety uh, they have already put, they have already spent that money into the economy through paying down debt getting themselves uh, um, caught up on rent whatever the case may be so they're not savers they're consumers now the people who will have excess money are the ones who saved it up uh, put in treasuries bought stocks whatever the case may be uh, that's that's what they did. That's the excess currency that is still within the economy. Okay, and this is a reminder, I think, of yes. Yeah, so okay, so yeah, it's, it's going to be uh, seven point six. Okay, so I knew it was something about like that. Seven point six. <coughs> Excuse me. Of uh. Shoot. Uh, a whopping 7.6 trillion in interest-bearing U.S. public debt, always known as U.S. Treasuries, will mature within a year. Um, that represents 31 percent of all outstanding U.S. government debt. So, in here, they're even admitting the fact that it's a U.S. Treasury savings bond. So, when someone tells you that we're in national, that we're in a, a financial crisis, you know this, that, and all the those are people who get paid to fear monger. Those are people who get paid to, to tell you the untruth as far as as far as the government financing. You look at the you look at the uh, the Constitution in terms of of, uh, of money. It states that that the Congress has the sole purpose of spending into the economy. Uh, that's also why they that's also why they brought in uh, the IRS. IRS is supposed to take some of that money out of the economy. Uh, then you also the 14th Amendment, uh, I think it's a third, maybe fourth one, one of the two, that uh, states that the national debt, the spending in the, uh, in the economy, cannot be questioned. So every time you hear about uh, the debt ceiling or that we pay, that our taxes pay for spending at the federal level, both are unconstitutional. Both claims are even claimed by those who claim to be constitutional uh, scholars or those who know about the Constitution. The only part of the Constitution those guys get right is the gun law. Otherwise, they know nothing about the Constitution. And some of them, in some cases, they may have even um, majored in the Constitution. But apparently, uh, they get paid to nitpick uh, different parts of the Constitution, which is which even the ones they nitpick and claim are was what it says. It doesn't say that if you look it up. Let's see, that is still below 2020 when debt maturing within a year made up a significant larger share than nearly one, uh, wait, nearly a third of all outstanding U.S. government debt, uh, all known as treasuries, is set to mature in, in the next 12 months according to analysis from asset management from Apollo, blah, blah, blah. Let's see, in terms of dollar amount, the 7.6 trillion, a high, uh, high not seen since 2021, and is a source of upward pressure on U.S. rates. In other words, when they mature and are redeemed, that means that the interest rate can go up on whoever uh, 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 length uh, they're offered on. I know they're similar offered on three, five six or so, uh, depending on the length, you know, and depending on how much you put into those. I also know that there are uh, things called investment bonds, where I think, but I believe that's where the states come in and they they offer investment bond on some form, uh, some form of land that they want to uh, to sell to someone or some type of effect and get an investor on it. That's why Amazon does 
uh, does government contracts. Those are what you would call investment bonds. Uh, let's see, in addition to public debt, maturing in the near term accounts for more than a quarter of U.S. GDP. However, this is below its 2020 peak when it made up a significant larger share. So let's see, 31 percent of you of all U.S. government debt outstanding, uh, uh, or 7.6 trillion, will mature over the next year. Yeah, so that's treasuries. That's these. That's all that is. Nothing else. The only uh, governmental body that cannot issue currency anymore are states. States cannot issue currency. They can sell property to the federal. They can lease land out, stuff like that. That's why you sometimes will see a uh, post office go out and go out of business because because it's half uh, uh, federal and half public in terms of financing. Another thing, Another thing I wanted to bring up. Now I put in uh, the, the Google machine or Bing machine this case. Uh, how, uh, how much money, uh, how much state taxes uh, go into uh, education and stuff like that. Now on one hand you'll see public schools for students in kindergarten through 12th grade are financed through a combination of local, state, and federal dollars and portions that vary across uh, across and within states. But if you go, if you look this way, it'll say the U.S. Department of Education provides funding for education program education programs at all levels, including elementary, secondary, and post-secondary education. The department uh, element, uh, wait, yeah, the department's elementary and secondary programs annual serve uh, serve nearly 18,200 school districts and over 500 million students uh, attending, roughly 98,000 public schools and 32,000 private schools. Now, if you think about it, if this, if if both are the case, that means that more of the federal funds that are paid towards schools are not actually going to the schools but probably going to administrative, you know, stuff like that. Uh, like, member of the school board, maybe they decide to take a pay raise or some to that effect, uh, which just tells me that they need a pay cut. Uh, then also, uh, cost of living needs to go down as well, anyways, to cover those, <laughs> cover the cost, uh, cost cuts on that. But it is not, the, the distribution is not fair. Uh, in terms of the educational system. This should be to all uh, school districts in terms of financing. If you finance a school district that has like wealthier class, that same amount of money should be going also towards the lower, the, the, the lower income. Because that way, the chances of an equal education is higher than claiming that more taxes go toward uh, go, uh, toward education in one because the area is uh, is, is worth more. That's BS. That should never that, that creates the inequality in education that we see everywhere in the freaking country either way. So that shouldn't be done either. Another thing that I think is kind of interesting, let me just kind of look back to here as a everlasting reminder. Okay. Bring this down. Don't know if you ever heard of um, Beardley Rumble. Beardley Rumble was the um, Fed chair, I believe, in uh, 1946. And he uh, coined a uh, article that was, that was called Taxes for Revenue Are Obsolete. And yeah, uh, he was the chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. And, and he, you can look this up if you like. Uh, but it says, Mr. Rumble read this paper before the American Bar Association during the last year of the war. 
It attracted then the less attention when it deserved and is. Oh wait, I'm sorry. It attracted le uh, it attracted then less attention than it deserved, and is even more timely now. With the tax structure undergoing changes for peace time, uh, his thesis is that given one control of central banking system and two, an in introvert. Inco oh wait, I'm sorry. Uh, incontrovertible. There we go. Currency. A sovereign national government is finally free of money worries and need no longer levy taxes for the purpose of providing itself with revenue. The problem is they don't. They don't distinguish the difference. This is my, my problem. This whole thing with taxes. They don't distinguish the difference between state and federal. At the federal level. They're, they don't need tax, taxes for, for spending. At the state level, however, they do. Uh, let's see. No money worries. They, will need, uh, they no longer levy taxes for the purpose of providing itself with revenue. All taxation, therefore, should be regarded from the point of view of social and economic consequences. The paragraph that embodies this uh, idea will be found... Uh, Idolized in the text, uh, Mr. Rumble, 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 Mr. Rumble, no, R Mr. Rumble, does not say precisely how, in that case, the government would pay its own bills. Uh, Article One, Section Eight of the uh, of the Constitution says that. But let me see if I can find that and let's see. Beard, beard. Uh, as you can see, I looked at it before. Uh, yes. Uh, Beardly Rumble, then the chair of New York Federal Reserve, g gave a speech in 1945, of course this article is from 1946, but anyway, uh, to the American Bar Association, titled Federal Taxes for uh, Revenue are Obsolete, or, yeah, are obsolete, but only in the last few years have members of Congress begun challenging the mistaken idea that taxes pay for 100% of government expenditure. Let's see, what does this say? Let's see, will I be able to read this? Well, a pay window. That's in 2021. Federal tax and finance spending and cost benefit analysis must change. By Alex Bowman, staff contributor. Okay, how many dollars must the United States government spend to save life as we know it from climate catastrophe? Answers vary. Representative AOC. Yeah, no. The Democrats use every aspect of, like, MMT-ish sort of language for their own purpose and mean nothing in terms of actual policy. Uh, Ten trillion, the American uh, Action Forum, led by the former director of the Congressional Budget, uh, estimated 93 trillion in seemingly significant number lies between these two estimates, 20.53 trillion as of Jan July 2021. And see, there are only 20.53 trillion of M2 money cash bank account or bank accounts mutual funds and money market securities in existence across the entire world. If the cost of saving the planet is above this number, then how will the federal government ever tax enough dollars to finance the cha changes required to fix uh, climate change? The answer is the government will not. In fact, an increasingly popular school of economics known as monetary theory, which is what I'm a proponent of and study, and talk about argues that federal taxes never finance spending. This theory of currency, also known as Charlism, which is I already found through that, uh, let's see, is not new. It has been around in the United States since the country began leaving the gold standard in 1933. Actually, before then, the Charles was actually used uh, uh, before the Civil War ended. Uh, let's see, to uh, adapt uh, a uh, fiat currency in its place, uh, Beersley Rumble, then the chair of the New York uh, Federal Reserve, gave a speech in 1945 to an American Bar Association titled Federal Taxes for Revenue are Obsolete, but only in the past few years have members of the Congress began challenging the mistaken idea that taxes pay for 
a hundred percent of government expenditure because they only that tax only spend uh, a good for spending at the state level. According to MMT, all dollars are spent into existence by the federal government first and taxed out of existence at later, which is true. When the federal government taxes dollars, it does not collect them; it uh, destroys them. This destruction of dollars serves as serves an exi existential important purpose. It guarantees private demand for the dollar, which otherwise has no determinal determinal minimal value. Uh, well, actually, meme of exchange, either way. So, uh, yeah, people need them to live on as far as uh, how they live their life. Uh, see, uh, see, no determinal, uh, detrim determinal minimal value. Okay, so I see that slowly anyway. Uh, companies, households, and other currency issuers, issuers, excuse me, users must pay their federal taxes and dollars to the currency issuer else face severe punishment. The dollar's unique ability to cancel tax obligations because or becomes its stable baseline value in the private market. The federal government, of course, does not tax itself. It has as much need for its own dollar as a teacher does for uh, oops, uh, own dollar because, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, government, of course, does not need to tax itself. It has much need, it has as much need for its own dollar as a teacher does for their own brownie points. As the currency issuer, the federal government never collects its own dollars because its purpose is to allocate them. It must spend more dollars into the economy than it taxes out, or else dollars would drain from the economy until none existed. When considering how many dollars to spend into existence, the federal government's true concern is, what, is whether the new dollar dollars will dilute the current currency, uh, causing inflation, which actually is mostly done by the lack of investment spending in manufacturing and housing inventory and stuff like that, and the uh, Fed interest rates. Uh, the question of inflation is a question of resources, not quantity. Of dollar, if a new uh, dollar raises demand for goods or services more than more than it raises or or conserves the supply of goods and services, then it is likely inflationary. Conversely, a dollar that preserves or creates resources more than it raises demand will expand the fiscal space of the entire economy. Such spending is like non-inflation, uh, likely non-inflationary, which means that no new taxes are needed to offset the new dollars. This blog post will not dive into, well, yeah, will not dive into measurements of real demand or real supply as MMT economists have done to determine how to fund the Green New Deal. Nonetheless, the simple fact that Federal taxes do not finance federal spending has enormous implications for lawyers and judges, especially within the field of environmental law. The law and political econo uh, economy projects projects. Excuse me. Have recently invited legal experts to contribute to a synopsis on cost benefit analysis, or CBA. The purpose of CBA rests on the reasonable idea that a regulation cost uh, should not exceed its benefits, and yet, as scholars for a symposium note, CBA often draws abhorrent, uh, arbitrary, and ridiculous conclusions. The Department of Justice asks people how much money they would accept to become victims of rape or sexual assault so that it could put a monetary value upon the benefits of rape provisions. The problem with this whole statement, from what I can see, is the fact that they compare the two. Um, re regulations in those industries that create the need for Green New Deal uh, would actually help stop the actions those industries are, are, are taking advantage of, of deregulation, in terms of uh, how they extract the natural resources that create the crisis to begin with. Like for instance, if you're a gas and oil company and your job is to extract natural gas from Earth, uh, your actions and the amount of actions you're doing is creating a temperature change. Uh, 
because when you attack, I think it's uh, the like shell-like uh, things in the core of the ground. Uh, when you crack those open and the natural gas is extracted, that creates more of a heating mechanism for the for the uh, environment to begin with. And you do enough of that, and you have a, you reset the natural temperature of the planet, from what from what I've understood anyway. Uh, doing that and uh, dumping waste uh, from uh, different manufacturing companies that use chemicals to produce products for all of us to use, whether it be for agricultural or other means, uh, that creates a water uh, a to toxology, uh, toxic environment on that. So uh, less regulations on those industries create less of a safe environment, uh, safe for consumers. Uh, so, but finding them uh, more money for their crimes than they make my and uh, they make off the products they they uh, they produce from those from those crimes might uh, help change their behavior in terms of uh, their method of extractions of natural resources. So I don't I mean unless I read that wrong, I could have who knows, but I don't think those two things are comparable uh, in terms of the uh, in terms of the topic. But anyway, let's see. Uh, let's see, the fountainhead of this stream of absurdity is the found fundamental irrational uh, rationality excuse me, a federal CBA, a fiat currency issuer measuring costs and benefits in its own currency which has no independent value to the issuer. The federal government need, uh, need only weigh the real positive and negative consequences of the desired policy goal and then consider potential inflation, the, co the actual cost. Inflation cannot be measured in, dollar, uh, in total dollars because inflation is not caused by more dollars entering the economy than leaving. Contrary to half of the Austrian economists out there who think that more government spending is the reason for inflation and in reality is actually because of the lack of focused investment by government spending that has created the lack of supply chain which has has upped the cost on cost of living. So everything from agricultural, manufa uh, agricultural manufacturing, in uh, housing inventory manufacturing, uh, steel manufacturing, everything that is, that, that have created the middle class went away. So if you reintroduced those kind of elements to the economy, then you will you would rebuild the middle class. But instead, they decided to make trade agreements with foreign countries to send those types of jobs elsewhere for cheaper labor, but yet raising the cost of importing because of sanctions on those same countries on those same commodities. So you're creating more and more and more financial um, disparity, uh, more financial uh, inequality. So you're so you're, so basically the Austrian way of doing things is actually creating the same crisis that it, that is that it's uh, uh, saying the, fe the the federal government is creating when in, in reality is actually their policies that created the crisis in the first place by deregulating and uh, allowing those same uh, industries to manipulate price setting, manipulate uh, laws, manipulate uh, uh, other aspects of that uh, economic system. So if you cut all that crap out and you re, uh, reinvest in supply chain, reinvest in housing, reinvest in people in general, then the economy would more likely get better either way because people would have the means uh, to do what they need to do to live and education to do it with and the job to do it with because all of it was recreating the economy that was taken away by the deregulation of those same industries and the sending of those jobs to other countries for cheaper labor. So I don't see that part, uh, how people don't understand that part of it. 
they only look at the the cost and not where the and not where the money is going, and the money is going to focused uh, things. Uh, then the cost long term will be lessened because if those costs are if, the, if that money is going towards things that will allow for roads to be better, technology to be better to create the roads and the better environment, uh, which creates better food, which creates you know more more housing, pretty much all the investments that a government needs to spend in order to make the economy better and long term not pretty much eat it, eat on itself like it is doing now, uh, this would be a better country. So it all has to be done through the currency issuer, federal spending. Taxation comes out after. Anyway, that's my little spiel, that's my little rant. Um, Learning Austrian economics is the opposite of what people need to learn. Anything, anything that's in the general vicinity of that is wrong in a currency issuing, free floating, uh, no outside currency debt uh, country like the US. The only thing you have to do is look it up and see what countries uh, don't have outside currency uh, debt, countries that have its own free floating fiat currency, that sort of thing, and you'll get a better picture. And that's what I have to say for now. And let me go back over here. Just remember, forever, US Treasuries are a seams account. That's also our national debt. Our national debt was created by government spending. But it all goes into U.S. Treasuries, which goes through the Fed. Peace out for now.